with Susie is with you this evening and it's a pleasure speaking with Professor Masood Kadami. On this episode we will be talking to Professor Kadami who is a clinical professor of obstetrics, gynecology and infertility of New York University, also an executive director of Infertility Research Foundation and in GO of United Nation, also a nomination for Nobel Peace Prize two years ago and happened to be my uncle whom I am very proud as always to be speaking to him on this occasion. Thank you for speaking with us and our viewers uncle and I know we have plenty to talk about particularly about this very interesting subject that is very close to your heart. Thank you so much Suzy Aziz for inviting me and spending time and effort on preventive aspects of healthcare. Thank you. Well, I thought it's very important to bring about this important issue that a lot of us probably don't even know about it. And yet, because of your specialty in your field of infertility, that may be something that people need to more uh, become aware of it. And then also not only to become aware, but also to learn what is it that we can actually do to help this matter hopefully one day to vanish and not ever exist. And that brings us to the subject of, what is it we're going to talk about, Uncle, tonight? Female genital, genital mutilation. Genital mutilation. Well, tell us what that is all about. What is it actually? And whereabouts in the world you see that most of the time? Well, this is something that it's done in the third world countries, mm -hmm. uh, mostly in Africa, mostly in Islamic countries, although this has nothing, no relationship with Islam. I see. Uh, controversy to the male uh, circumcision, which is a great thing to do if it is done right, but female circumcision is a major, major catastrophe uh, to young population in the world. And we're trying to stop and try to educate people that they should stop doing this. May I ask for our viewers sake to tell us more in detail what is the actual reason for this event to take place to begin with? Why would they do this? To Well the female? reason is male chauvinistic I always call I it. See. The men centuries and centuries ago in order to prevent the young woman to have sex mm -hmm. they would do the circumcision so they would not be able to have sex till they are ready to get married. But men can do anything they want, but women are not allowed to. And that is why last year, one million young women in the developing countries mm -hmm. were subjected to this brutal, brutal act. And, and at what age do they go under this um, operation, whatever it's called? They do it from the age 10 to wow. 25. Okay, so and you said mostly there are countries in Middle East probably. Do they Africa. do this also in Iran? They used to do it, uh, but through our agents, UN, mm -hmm. we approached the higher authority and told them about the disadvantage of this brutal act. Mm -hmm. And now we have a fatwa from the top, right. which says this should not be done. So it's no longer illegal. It is illegal now. But okay. the most unfortunate thing is that people who believe in it strongly, they take their daughter out of the country to Yemen and other countries that they do this brutal act, wow. circumcise them, bring them back to the country. And I remember talking to you before the show, you were saying that doing this kind of an operation to um, young female would actually make them become infertile. So eventually they may not even be able to become pregnant. Is that so? It causes variety of gynecological problems mm -hmm. and one of them is infertility. The reason I'm involved is that I work with infertility right. and my main subject is to prevent infertility. And one of the causes of infertility, of course, is female genital mutilation. So how long ago did you actually start this project and how successful has that been so far? Well, 12 years ago we wrote an article after studying the female genital mutilation around the world mm -hmm. and the article was published in the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. In that article we mentioned to the higher authorities, the American College, the Congress, 
the presidents that this brutal act should be stopped. Why? Because not only it causes infertility, but it causes a whole host of other gynecological problems like infection, tubal infertility. And, and then once they do get pregnant, they would have problem delivering because uh, either they have to have a cesarean section or they have to have procedures to cut the canal open for delivery of the head. Oh my goodness. So there are a variety of issues, not just variety, the infertility, but it also continues on. Psychologically, these young women, they are unbelievable. I had one patient with that and mm -hmm. I was surprised. I didn't know what it was. When I asked her what happened, she started sobbing, crying, and privately she told me wow. that she had undergone female genital mutilation when she was 10 years old. And that had happened in this country, in the U.S.? Or? No, this happened out of the country, but the patient was in New York. My goodness. Now, I also was told, if I'm not mistaken, that this was not necessarily this example, but this had happened in the United States, even though it wasn't legal here. Is that right? It was happening, but... Uh, they were, the doctor who was doing it was arrested. Okay. And then uh, his license was revoked. Good. And the procedure was stopped. Good. Now we are trying to make sure that this procedure does not creep into the United States. I because see. it is possible that they can do it silently. I see. Okay, now in order to help you reach your goal, which I know how close that is to your heart, and trying to help all these females around the world that are going through this very unfortunate stuff. What have you done so far, and what is it that you actually need from our viewers who are listening, who may want to be helping you to reach your goal? What should one do besides just you know, being told that this is going on and giving them the information and the knowledge, which is great to have, but what should people actually do to help this, uh, you know, for you to reach your goal? We need funding. Okay. to the United Nations, and we need to go to all countries, third world countries, to do this brutal act and tell them about the brutality of it and then the disadvantage of it, not only infertility, but so many other causes. This is one area, and anyone who is interested, they can send their contribution to the Fertility Research Foundation, mm -hmm. which is a non-profit tax-exempt organization so that we can put together a group of people, experts, to go to African countries. And our next project is Nigeria, uh -huh. which okay. is done brutally, brutally frequently. So that is one step. The second step is that we like to educate our politicians. And fortunately, our mm -hmm. politicians, senators and congressmen, they either don't know or they don't care about doing something so that we would try to stop this brutal act in the third world countries. Well, thank you very much for your time, for giving our viewers the information about this very important matter. And if you are interested, after hearing what Dr. Academy uh, was telling us, you can surely and hopefully go to their website, frfbaby.com, and get more information and get involved. And hopefully this issue will be uh, resolved and uh, you get to your goal. That's right. We sent the book, the fifth book that I have written to 500 senators and congressmen, and it cost me a fortune. Do you believe that not a single congressman or senator sent me back a letter saying, thank you for the book, we tried to help you with this? No one. No one cared. Well, hopefully, uh, with talking about it more, putting out the information more, more people become caring and hopefully you get to what you have started with this I, I hope so. immensely important project. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Professor Academy. And Live with Susie will be right with you. Thank you.